And welcome to 520 Sports Talk. We are here in Sardineville. There's got to be 100 people here at Frog and Ferg. And thank you very much, Scrambler Nation. Uh, can you go ahead and pan the crowd uh, before we even get started. Uh, this has got to be the biggest uh, turnout that we've had this year. We had 80 a couple of weeks ago, but there's, there's a lot more than 80 people here. And thank you very much, uh, Scrambler Nation. Um, we knew you guys knew how to represent. And uh, this is going to be a great show. I mean, I have a... Uh, personal kind of stake in this show. I've known these two guys to my right uh, forever. Uh, Louie was my boss on the fire department, so uh, it's, it's a real special show for me. I've been trying to get you guys on for, what, yeah. three years three now? Years and now finally got it, but, you know, this team travels anywhere and, and everywhere. They they say bring it, and it will take on anybody and everybody, so uh, we're going to find that out a little bit later in the show. So well, let's start off with the sponsors. we got to pay some bills first. Dynamic Comfort and Air Conditioning and Heating. Uh, where your comfort is our only concern. I'm telling you right now, this is the last time of the year you want your AC breaking down. So if it's uh, not performing well, give Dynamic uh, Comfort AC and Heating a call. 520-323-0088. 520-323-0088. Frog and Furkin, we love you. Garrett and Jody always lay out the red carpet for us. Got the big back room on the big stage. Uh, this is where all our big shows are. So if you're at the Frog, you've arrived. So... Something always going on at the Frog. You got sports seven days, seven nights a week. You got our show. You got karaoke with Lucas Gonzalez on Wednesday. Uh, live music, and it's just a great time to go to Frog. Voted the best pizza by the Arizona Daily Star, the best burger in the uh, Main Gate Square Food Festival back in April. It's just a fabulous menu they have, and it's a great place to uh, check out if you have not been in here. You really, really need to come. Bianchi's Italian, two convenient locations to serve you. The original location at Speedway and Silverbell, next to the West Campus of Pima, and the show, the location we have our shows at up in Marana, at Thornydale and Tangerine. Been in business since 1977. Uh, definitely check them out. Johnny Gibson's Downtown Market and High Wire Lounge on Sixth Avenue between Broadway and Congress. This is where our show Under the Stars happens in the back patio. Uh, definitely check it out. Johnny's got great burgers, great sandwiches, ready to eat food. Obviously, being a grocery store, they've got dozens of things to drink for adults and the kids. And High Wire Lounge will take care of the adults out in the patio uh, when we have the show. Arizona Native Landscaping Design Installation and Maintenance. Go to ArizonaNativeLandscaping.com or check them out on the Facebook page at Arizona Native Landscaping. want to welcome uh, one of our newest sponsors, High Five Sports Grill, up in my neck of the woods at Orange Grove and Thornydale in Marana. This is the home of our 520 Sports Talk BMX show from Sports Park, and if you watch the BMX show that we had at Bianchi's, the second most all-time watch show in the history of 5 Tio Sports Talk, 3,500 viewers. So thank you, we're looking forward to the end of the month to having you guys on. We'll get to the rest of the sponsors uh, just a bit later. So I do want to make a, a special program note. It's nice to be back in, in Tucson. We're a little weary from going on the road. This is our seventh day out of the last nine days that we've either had a show or we covered uh, the Indoor Football League Championship. I want to give a special shout-out to Copper Still Moonshine Grill up in Chandler, uh, right off the 10 Freeway in Chandler Boulevard. I'm at, it's an hour from my house in, in uh, Marana, so I'm at Tucson, folks. If you want to go up and you know have dinner in Phoenix, catch a 602 Sports Talk show, this is where we're going to start having them. And uh, they had a great uh, time last night. We had the East Mesa Bandits, uh, 16U and uh, 18U. And just a good time. Uh, those kids are really, really good softball players, and it's nice to be up in the Valley. So thank you again, Copper Still Moonshine Grill. All right, fellas, what's up, man? Good to see you guys. Hey, I've known this good kid since uh, he, he was about, well, he was already walking, but he, but, uh, he, he was a little guy. Louie, like I said, was my boss at the fire department so for many, many years. So um, just give us kind of a, an overview of the – of you know the organization, how long it's been. I know Louie, you started it way back in the day, and just kind of give us an overview on that. Well, first of all, I want to thank all our Scrambler families for being out here tonight and supporting us. And more important, you know, Bill says I started this organization, but I, I have to take my hat off to my wife because she's actually uh, Veronica, definitely. Yeah, Veronica, <laughs> Mama F G started. Uh, she kind of oversees everything, make sure that everybody's treated right and so forth. But we, that we're ending our 33rd season, 33 years. Wow. Longest running uh, ASA team, Southern Arizona, probably in the state now. Yeah, uh, you and the Roadrunners have been around since yeah, God was yeah. a kid. <laughs> Roadrunners. And, you know, 
we started this out uh, so many years ago when we were trying to get our young ladies to be seen by scouts throughout the country in order for them to get an opportunity to be recruited free scholarships and so forth to further education sure and since most of the scouts didn't come to our neck of the woods we decided we'd take them out to them and that's how we formed the scrambler team to uh, showcase our girls throughout the country and that we have from hawaii to to Wisconsin. <laughs> well, I remember when when I was at work, you know, and it was like, you know, where's Louie? Oh, he's at a softball tournament in San Diego or something like that. I mean, you were always doing something. I remember that. I used all my vacation. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> and borrowed some from somebody else. And, and a few <coughs> sick days, I think. No, I hear you. Bruno, um, you, you know, Bruno, if you don't know, he's the uh, head coach of the Desert View High School softball team. Uh, Bruno, just tell, tell us a little bit about your history. My history is uh, how I got into this is I'm uh, only boy of four sisters, so uh, we st he started off with men's fast pitch, Alvario softball. I want to give a shout out to all those players. That's where I learned this game from my father in Alvario softball. At the same time, I uh, came home from school, AWC, where I was playing football, and I came home to continue my education, and my little sisters wanted to pick up and play some ball. Right on. Right and on. Uh, he already had his established 18U team, and that's when I came in and started a 16U team. And... Uh, it's been there from there. I've uh, transitioned from the 16 to the 18, and I've been 18 ever since. And then he's gone down to 10 and worked his way up all the way back to 16, gave me the 18s, and back down again and working his way up again. So our history has always been a, a family thing, like my mom, my dad. All my sisters have coached the scrambler team at one point or time, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cousins and uncles. And it's just been a – that's probably why our mainstay has been so long is the fact that we keep that family first mentality. Well, I like about your organization, and uh, it's not true about every organization. A lot of them, they're worried about the wins, the losses. You guys are develop, develop, develop. Yeah. I mean, you start them at 10U, you teach them the game, they go up to 12, 14, 16, 18. You know, by the time they're 14, they're ready for high school. By the time they're 18, they're ready to go D1, D2, D3. Yeah. I mean, you guys have put so many kids in college and helped them get scholarships, and that's such a, a big thing to take uh, the financial burden off the parents and let these kids play the game that they love that they brought you know they were brought up to play and you know and now it's kind of neat i was talking last night in chandler with the uh with the pro league now with women's softball they have another avenue to continue in the game that they that they excel in and that they love at a professional level uh that wasn't true maybe you know a few you know 10 years ago or something it's very true and they also brought started a second league you know you had that mpf and then you got brought out in the southern region of alabama and so forth they had their own little league now too so there's two avenues for the girls to take but i think you made it a great note is uh development 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 you know some teams they start off and they they really want to do wins and losses and you know not everybody starts this game at that level you know you see some kids who peak at 14 right, right. some at 16 but then you have those diamonds in the rough that you develop at 14 and they don't peak until it's time at 18 years and you know you just want to keep that 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 avenue for them to continue to move through and uh, hopefully, you know, we, we, for every success story, there's always that, you know, one that you lose and goes and does something different. But I think in the, in the most part, most of my girls and my dad's girls, we're still in contact with these girls daily, girls that are still at school, girls that are now uh, lawyers and professionals in their life with children and still in contact with us on the main stand daily. Well, you guys are probably can, you're coaching the second generation. Like, I, <laughs> Louie, I coached your mom. Now you're coaching the daughters or something like that. I mean, Bob told me the same thing when he brought the Roadrunners in here, and it's just, it's a great thing to, you know, to de you know to keep that family atmosphere that, hey, my mom played, I'm comfortable enough, this is a great organization, I want to follow in my mom's footsteps. You know, there's a lot to be said uh, for that. What I like, too, is you encourage the kids to play up. Um, you know, we have college sports advocate, we have WSSA, we have a lot of scouting services that watch our softball shows, and they called me during the week, and they're like, you know, we don't even want to talk to them unless they're playing up. If you're 12 and you're batting 500, 500 600, you need to go up. Yes. You need to bat 280 and learn how to deal with the speed and, and stuff like that. Because um, I, had, I had Sherry Nadine call me from uh, college sports advocate, they're starting to recruit. They're starting to look at parents now. They're yes. saying, you know, if we see, you know, we'll go to a game. We're not going to announce ourselves. And we see the parents yelling at the refs and yelling at the kids and stuff. A lot of times that's a deterrent for them to even talk to the kid, no matter what their talent is. So a lot of people don't realize that the, the kind of the parents are on, on uh, the microscope, too. You know, we've always had a saying that uh, we look at the parents when we recruit our kids. Exactly. That's the first thing we do. 
if we got great parents, we can always teach the athlete to play ball, but we can't change parents' attitude. So we look for parents good, and that's been our success story. As you can see here, we have a lot of great parents, and we've been very fortunate to always have a bunch of great parents behind us, and that's what makes us so unique. Oh, exactly, and you know, it's that's not true across. I mean, I, you know me; I coach Y basketball, and I I quit coaching because of having to deal with the parents. You know, your kid's not Michael Jordan. You know, he's not he's not he's on the bench because I'm going to be honest with you; he's not that good. Now we're going to try to make him better, but don't come at me yeah. and say why isn't my kid starting when he can't tie a shoe? You know, yeah. you know. But it's nice to know that it doesn't matter when they get into softball. You're going to take. You're going to do the baby steps all the way up until they're proficient, and then you're going to probably ramp up the training, ramp up the development, and start. You know, getting them. Okay, now you're ready to start playing up. Now you're ready to start. You know, playing. You know, getting ready to think about. You know, the next level, junior college or, or high era college or something exactly. like that. Exactly. And, and and to talk about your point about playing up, and I think we do that a lot in our organization for the fact that. When we started in 86, the only age division was 18U. Right. So if you were 10 years old and wanted to play ball, you had to play 18U. You were 12, you had to play 18U. So those early generation of teams, they only knew 18U, you know. And when we came in growing in, I mean, if the kid had the skills and the talent and the mindset and was able to function in that older, they played up, you know. And it wasn't about trophy hunting. It wasn't about the Ws. Right. It was like, I wanted to get this kid to be the best ball player she could be and you push know, herself every day. We exactly. had, uh, a, you know, when we first started in 86, there wasn't much softball. So, you know, there were some pioneers, uh, Kelly Flower, Flower uh, Belen Camacho, Bob Hammaker, right. uh, Frank Camperano, just to mention a few, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mel Bird. Those are the pioneers along with us that sat down and worked hard right. to build the softball community. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, a lot of them are not in it anymore, but they still follow it. They still see yeah, what's going great. on. That's great. That's great. I would say what sixty-five percent of our shows are softball shows. Nice. We love the we love the softball. The nice thing that I like about softball compared to baseball, and I played baseball and I played fast with softball. But what I see, not only throughout the show, but just when going to a game, is when you have girls, they're like a sponge. They want to learn. They don't come with the attitude that the boys come with that I already know everything and you can't teach me anything and get out of my face type thing. The girls want to learn. They're receptive. They you know they help each other out. You know if they're ones down, they rally behind one. Uh, you know the 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 chanting and the dugouts. I mean that's some of the best that's some of the best times you can have. You know it's it's hard to say. We play softball 24/7, and when we work together. We played softball on Tuesday and Wednesday against the different fire stations. I remember that. I remember that. His <laughs> uncle Richard, which was my superintendent, he pitched for us, and it, we played against his dad. Yeah. And it it was for fun, but it was so competitive. It even was at competitive. That level. Yeah. <laughs> I I miss the days of men's fast pitch because there was some really really good talent here in Tucson. I mean, going to Santa Rita Park or Ori or some of the parks, you know, where they had the men's fast. Yeah, it's sad that, that that that's all died down now. You know, Prescott still has four teams up there, men playing. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah, and here, you know, we had some great ball players that come out of here. Great teams, great individuals, and it would hope that someday, you know, it comes back. But just like in our game, it's just like the men's game. It's all down to pitching. Right. Exactly. And once all the pitchers phased out, it was kind of like, darn, what are we going to do now? Yeah. Now let me ask you this. I mean, because Louie knows this, you know this. I'm a big advocate of student athlete, not athlete student. So, how do you? What message do you give your your girls from you know from 10 all the way up to 18 about time management? About you know you got to keep the grades up. It's not like school ball where they have to you know they're technically eligible or ineligible, but you may have your own set of uh, standards that you know that they have to meet. The girls are listening to you and they're smiling because yeah. they know. <laughs> well, you know, uh, uh, different from maybe a lot of teams is. In the summertime, we're all about ball. Right. You know, it's summertime. And when we get to fall season, even spring for that matter, um, we, we, we go in a, a slower mode in essence where I may only practice one day a week. If I go two days a week, if you got a homework assignment, you're always excused from practice. Okay. There's practices where I may only have five kids because everyone's got things to do. My thing is your grades come first. Right. Right. You know, uh, being a high school coach, you've got to have your grade That's work true. done. Yeah, so I'm big hand. on it. Like, I don't even harp on them. Coach, I miss practice. Coach, it is this and that. Now I just ask them, just be honest with me. Don't lie to me. But then they all know. We're all friends on social media, and 
I monitor that and like take this down. Don't put that. You told me you were doing homework, but I saw you having dinner with your boyfriend. I That's mean, right. just right. be honest with me. That's yeah. all I'm asking. But I do want you to make sure those grades are on point. You know, and that's true because, I mean, at the end of the day, there's going to come a time where you got to hang up the spikes yeah. and you got to get, I don't want to say a real job, but, I mean, you have to get a, a you know, a, a job outside of sports unless you're going to coach, you know, but it still goes on the same line of thinking that education is going to uh, be your pathway to success as an adult. You know, very true. I just had a discussion on a, on a road trip home with a group of young ladies, and I talked to them about doing this for a purpose and getting your school paid for and uh, becoming that independent woman where you can manage your money pay your own bills be your own person you know and if you find that special someone that's just a plus right right but at the same time you're able to be that independent educated well well-rounded woman and that's what i really want for all these young ladies in my organization is you know go out and do that i think it's important for them to be successful in that manner exactly and we're going to talk to them about school just because of the fact that and Louis knows probably talking to my uncle and my dad and stuff. I screwed around the first two years of high school and got, you know, C's, D's, maybe a couple of B's and stuff. And then my dad had to come to Jesus talk with me and said, you're a really good athlete, but you're really ruining it for yourself. My junior and senior year, I got a straight A's almost, but it was too late. It's too late. And a lot of colleges didn't, because my overall average wasn't what it should have been, a lot of colleges bypassed me. And I, I got reduced uh, recruiting trips, so you know it's definitely you know you want to hit it hard as a freshman, even in even in middle school, you want to hit it hard to prepare yourself. And uh, unfortunately, I had to learn the hard way. So, um, what can people do, the viewers out there? What can they do if they want to be part of the Scrambler organization? I think this is where it comes in from different from every team probably out there, right, Pop? Yep. Um, you'll never see us post about tryouts. You'll never see us say, hey, it's trials for the scramblers. Pretty much, we are old grassroots, word of mouth. Hey, can my daughter be a scrambler? Perfect. You know? well, and we've got a generational thing. A generational too, thing. You know? So, we've, you know, one thing we have is we've never not had a team. I noticed that. Yeah, we've never not. Like, hey, we need 14U, 12U. I've seen stuff, teams you know, come and go. I've seen yeah. some great 14s and 16s, and they're a flash in the pan. They're there for one or two seasons, and they're gone. But I'll, we're always here. And it's primarily because of that grassroots. And if a kid wants to work and wants to be work hard at it, we'll, we'll be willing to teach the game for them and do the best we can to make them the best ball player they can be. There you have it. One of the best, if not the best, along with the Roadrunners. Old school thinking, old school training, and just a, keeping a family atmosphere with an eye on education. Thank you guys so much. so much. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, boss. <laughs> And uh, we'll get the uh, we're gonna get the what the 16 U guys up here first. Uh, yeah, we'll do the 16 U first. Okay, so we're gonna do the 16 U. So uh, while we're doing that, let's just continue with our uh, with our sponsors, uh, Catalina Auto Recycling. Why buy used when new or why buy new when used will do? I'm telling you, my car, half my car, has parts from Catalina Auto Recycling, from the engine to uh, windshield wiper, reservoir. Uh, I'm gonna get leather seats for my 350Z. All part of Catalina Auto Recycling. It saved a boatload of money. Um, David Adams is using them. Uh, so, you know, they definitely work. Go to CatalinaAutoRecycling.com. Look for the part you need. If they don't see it, they can. They have a nationwide network. They can definitely get it to you, usually within a few days or maybe a week at the most. Arizona Lending Specialist. Contact Mo, the mortgage lady, at 520-510-6698 for the lowest rates in town. Now, when you're buying a house and you're paying... $150,000, $200,000 for a house, when you can cover half a percentage or three quarters of a percentage point off your interest rate because she works with you, she will beat the sunsets, the Nova home loans. That's, you know, eight ten thousand dollars $10,000 you're going to save. That's a big thing. Jim Miller State Farm. Jim, I love you. Jim is one of our favorite um, sponsors. Located now at Coach Line and Silver Bell up in the Continental Ranch area. He's your one-stop shop for auto, life, home, renters, and bank insurance. Look for his red VW outside next to the Pima Federal Credit thing and go bug him for a quote. So we'll finish up with our uh, sponsors a little bit later. Fellas, what's up? And ladies, sorry. I turned around. I was like, okay. So um, we already know him because he uh, bossed me around for 15, 20 years. We'll start with you. Just give us your name and uh, what role you play in the organization. Um, well, my name is Edith Prieto. 
and I currently coach the 12U as well as the 16U. Um, and, you. and yep, and I also help with the 18s. That's good. Uh, I'm Victoria Hernandez. I also help coach the 12U, and Louis is my grandfather. Uh, we also help. Yeah, I help her out too with the 16s. We also help out a little bit with the 18s. Um, I think that's it. Cool. My name's Gabe Salgado. Um, I usually just shag balls and put up nets and stuff. <laughs> You're doing the dirty work, yeah, huh? Just carry balls, stuff like that. My name is uh, Curtis Johnson, and I just help Louie with the 16, 14, 16. Yeah. Okay, great, great. Okay, so you guys with the with the foundation that Bruno and Louie laid, they shard them at 10, they move all the way up to 18. So it's just basically you're passing them along to a different set of coaches. You guys all talk to each other, obviously. So you know what you have coming up. You know what you have behind you, and you know what, what's going forward into a higher age group. That's that, – that's – you can't put a price on that. I mean, that's just irreplaceable That because of the fact that everybody stays within the Scrambler organization from the time they're 10 to 18 and then beyond. Everybody comes back and says, hey, I'm, you know, thanks for not. So talk to me about starting young at 10 and then moving through the ranks, so to speak. What, you know, what's, your base, what's your message when you first start them out when they're young? They don't necessarily know the game that well up until they're 18 and they're ready to go into college and, and make an impact. Well, first of all, what I usually tell, I don't have my conversation so much as they do with the players. I have mine with the parents. And I tell the parents from the very beginning, because these are also former scrambers. They played for me, now they're coaching for me. But I tell the parents, one thing you have to understand is gauge where your daughter is today and where she is at the end of the season. Not trophies, not wins and losses, but you see your own daughter's improvements, and that's how you gauge it. From there, we'll work to teach her what she needs to know. Right. We'll move her upward. But you as a parent, I don't need you to say you need to do this. What I need you to do is whistle and clap. Cheer them on, <laughs> provide positive attitude, your hands. <laughs> and, and move forward. No, I hear you. I hear you. And, and Bob, Bob Hammock is watching. Bob, we love you. You know that. You and Louie are the, the pioneers of, of uh, club softball here in, in the old Pueblo. So... When you're young, you know, you're learning the game, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to, you know, fundamentally you're not sound. I mean, that just goes without saying in any sport. How do you keep the young one's spirits up? You know, because when you're, when you're 9, 10 years old and you make a mistake, that's a big deal when you're a kid. And, you know, and, and you get down, it's just natural to get down on yourself. Um, how do you combat that? You I could draw from your own experience when you were that age. <laughs> I think uh, with the younger girls, it's more of like an assurance that they're going to get better. So when they make a mistake, yeah, as a coach, no matter who you are, you get upset, you know, because you're supposed to make it. But I think with the younger girls, it's more like a, an, a learning experience. So as, as coaches, you're seeing it as now that's what you got to work on. And you kind of just got to tell them that if you're going to make that mistake, you make it up on your hitting. And I think that's a lot with like the younger girls that they're starting to learn that no matter if you make a mistake you always have a chance to come back and make up for me now when they get up here i'm going to give them some situational questions uh what would you rather do like a defensive big play or a walk off you know on offense and stuff but i just want to see where their mindset is because that's, that's going to be the trick question yeah, what they because, like the most well, that's why they pay me the big money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so okay so let's kind of uh, let's kind of graduate up to 12 going into 14 how do you uh, how do you transition from okay now you know the game your fundamentals still need to be worked on but at least you have an idea of how the game is played the strategy uh, you know where to go for the cutoff you know how to run the bases you know are you you know that type of thing um, I think we just really stress to our girls like because we're such like a close like community of people. Uh, everybody like who's in front of you like you want to look up to her as your role model look at her and see how she plays what she does and that's how you want to be and I think that helps yeah yeah that's true and I think that really helps like our younger girls make that transition to uh, as they're moving up and because like he said we practice together at practices and stuff they see what the other girls do and they see that that's what we expect from them and so that helps them really like grow and mature like really quickly 
uh, to move up to the next level. That's really got an, be an advantage to have a 10-year-old practicing with 16-year-olds. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, in six years, I want to be as yeah. good, if not better, than them. And it's good for the 16-year-olds to kind of assume a responsibility and, hey, these, you know, I was once your age, now I'm here, you're there, but I'm going to mentor you and I'm going to do everything I can to help you yeah, be, definitely. you know, be great. And, like, you, especially, you can even see right here, like, the, like, the, the older girls support the younger girls and the younger girls support the older girls. Everybody's going to each other's games and, like, just being there for each other throughout, like, this whole thing from 10 to 18. Now, that's great. Okay, so let's move up a little bit. 16. Okay, you're playing club ball, you're playing school ball, you kind of balance the, you know, with the academics and, and kind of playing both, you know, both school and club ball. A little bit different situation. Uh, you want to prepare them to get to the 18 because that's when you start thinking D1, D2, D3, Pima or something like that. Get them, in a, you know, get them into a scholarship mode. Yeah, me and JV coach. Me and Louie and okay. I. Oh, yeah, perfect. JV coach with them all there at Desiree also along with the girls. And a lot of these girls will get to see all year long, and they progress with us. And another thing in this organization, we got girls that are 14, 16 that can move up and play with the 18s as soon as they come. Team all in school. As soon as they, they're 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 able to, and a lot of them are able to play in all three in 14, 16, and 18. And that's what's good of being an organization like this, and which I'm really happy to be a part of, is that. Their, their limits they're, they're limited only to what they want themselves to do if they want to if they want to go for it and they want to play Bruno and Louis are always willing to give them an opportunity and some of these girls I like the 14 years old playing with the 18 year old and hanging in there no that's great I saw that there. firsthand um, um, I'm really good friends with Rebecca Quiroz at Pima and uh, before the season started she had DT come over and do a scrimmage with them yeah, yeah, yeah. and they had two girls that were in middle school that were playing up and they hit gappers off a junior college pitcher. I mean, you know, that, that, so that's that's what you want to see, you know. I mean, it's just like, that's great. Curtis Tom, we play the college circuit, too. <laughs> we play the college circuit, too. Yeah, we play in that circuit with as well. And like um, everyone's saying here, you know, the organi organization is a good place to be. You know, a lot of opportunities to move around and... You know, it's not you. You're not just stuck in one. Area. Sure. You know, there's good, good organization here. Well, it's kind of neat because we talked to, to Bruno and Louis at the first about playing up. It's like you guys play up anyways within your organization because everybody practices together. So that is playing up right there. Yeah, and like I said, like it just goes to, like these girls. They look up to each other, and then the at practices, the older girls are helping the younger girls because, like you said, like. Like, even us, like, yeah, we've been there. We've been where you are. Like, we know it's hard. We know sometimes you feel like you can't keep up, but that's what the girls are there for, to let you know that you can. And I think that just gives the, like, younger ones, whether you're when you're 14, playing 18s, or 12s, playing 14s, like, that just gives you the confidence to know that you can do it. You can hang in there with all of these other girls. Exactly. I want to say a quick hi to Sly Lewis uh, from Sabino. We're going to come and check you out of uh, football. You're in my first school for preseason uh, coverage. I already talked to Coach McBrayer, and uh, we're going to go out and check out the uh, 2019 Sabercats. So. Okay, so 18. Focus is totally different. You're, fu you're, sun you're fundamentally sound. I can't even talk. You're fundamentally sound. You're going to the next level. You're trying to get them to get, you know, to get on scholarship. doesn't matter what level. I mean... Pima's a great program, D1, D2, D3, you know, whatever you can go. Um, Louie knows, I mean, some of the smaller schools, the private schools that are D2, D3, they're actually harder academic-wise than the U of A or some of the, you know, some of the other big big colleges or four-year colleges. So so how do you, how do you, what's your final transition before you kind of let the bird fly out of the nest? Well, you know, what we do is we also, uh, we have the circuit where we play all the JCs in Arizona. Okay. We schedule them. And one of the things that Bruno conveys and the coaches convey to the girls is you're going to get your chance to showcase yourself, your ability. Here's a coach that's not going to hear from somebody else. Here's a coach that's not going to be able to read the stats. She's going to have an opportunity to see you in see action. First hand, yeah. First hand. Exactly. That leaves an impression that is no doubt going to stay there. So play your best. And like you said, when that DT hit the gapper, 
that left an impression on not only that young lady but the coach oh, yeah. from Pima. Definitely, definitely. So I wouldn't want to be the pitcher and have to go home and talk to your, your family that night. But, uh, you know, nevertheless, it's actually, you know, it's probably good for them too because as we all know as, as, as former athletes and coaches, you're going to learn a lot more from a loss than you are a win. You know, it doesn't matter if you're just seeing it eye to eye, if you break it down on film like football players or, or something like that. You know, when you win, you were the best team that day. And you, you know, everything fell in place. Sometimes you get a little lucky. Sometimes it's just pure skill. But, you know, when you lose, there's things you could point out. Hey, you, you booted this fall. It could have been a double play. Hey, you overran the base and you got tagged out, you know. Hey, you, you know, you looked at that third strike and it was right down the middle. You didn't protect the plate, that type of thing. So there's a lot to be learned. And the nice thing about, I don't want to say the nice thing about losing, but it's a learning thing. And with you, with your collection of coaching, you're going to put these kids in a position to win if they listen to you. And, you know, and that's the big thing, kids. It doesn't matter what, what softball team or what club or school team you're on. Listen to your coaches. They've been there. Listen to you know they're going to put you. You know they're going to put you in a position to be competitive, to probably win. And if they make a mistake, which happens, you know it's on them. But you listen to them and, and do and listen to your parents too. <laughs> All right, thanks, coaches, very much. We'll, go, we'll get. Good to see you. All right. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. All right. So we're going to get the 14 U kids up. Thank you so much. All right. The 16 U girls. Yeah, the younger ones. That's right. Yeah. All right, so let's continue with uh, paying the bills here. Teller Trophy, two convenient locations to serve you. The original location at 6th Avenue and 6th Street, and also the east side location at the 5700 block of East 22nd Street. Tucson's original trophy and award center. Go to tellertrophy.com. Teller Trophy also does a lot of, they have like marketing stuff, like keychains, things you can give away. Um, you know, if you're like an insurance agent or a realtor, that type of thing. They've got door plaques where... You know, you're a CEO or, you know, or something like that. You know, if you need to put something on the door, uh, that's all Teller Trophy. Just don't think of them as a trophy and certificate and plaque place. So, First Heritage Realty, the A to B team with Brittany Palma. Brittany was on our show right here at Frog and Firkin last week with the uh, kickboxing and the jujitsu um, show. That was a really, really good show. 1,700 views so far. We love Brittany. She's one of our original sponsors. Uh, whether you're ready to buy or sell, whether you're looking for a townhouse, condo, uh, or just land, or a house, or you're ready to sell one of those, give her a call, 520-270-7958, or go to the A2B team, and that's the number two. So it's A and then 2Bteam.com. And move the healthy way. Oasis Air Conditioning and Heating. Make sure your units are in tip-top shape. Owned by former Blue Devil, David Marietta, who's also my cousin. Give them a call, 520-648-1755. New Stitch Embroidery right here is where it's at. They do our shirts. They do a great job. Just located just north of Pueblo High School on 3114 South 12th Avenue. They also do silk screening, embroidery, and fabric laser printing. Give them a call, 520-741-1070, or go to newstitch.net. It's not .com, .net. I went to here. This is my favorite. This is my favorite sponsor. Outside of Frog and Firkin. Got to make that uh, clear. Pat's driving. I went there today, had a chili dog. I had the fries. I had a Dr. Pepper. You can't call yourself a Tucson unless you've been to Pat's driving over in Barrio Hollywood on Grande and Niagara. So definitely check them out. Uh, they are a Tucson institution, just as the Scramblers are. And uh, we love their sponsorship. Definitely check them out, and you'll won't be, you won't be disappointed. So we'll finish up. A little bit later with the next group, ladies. How are you tonight? Good. Nobody's nervous, are you? I'm, I'm tired. I've been, I'm a, I've been a road warrior. I, I, uh, I'm not as young as you. I don't have the energy left. But uh, I've had something going on seven of the last nights, uh, either here or in Phoenix or in Chandler or in Peoria. So it's been, uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. I'm not going to argue. Uh, 602 Sports Talk last night with the uh, East Mesa Bandit softball team. That was a good show. And uh, but it's good to be back home. I in Tucson. So we'll start with you. Give us your name, what school you go to, and what positions you play. Do I talk in this? Yep. Um, I'm Candice. Do I say my last name? Sure. <laughs> There's a lot of boys out there watching, you know, you never know. Of course, you can't date till you're 35, all right? I'm just letting you know. 
Um, I'm Candice Johnson. Um, I go to Desert. I'm gonna go to Desert View High School. Um, I'm a pitcher and I play third. Okay, great. Um, my name is Nia Hernandez. I'm gonna be a junior at Desert View High School and I play first and all of outfield, but mostly right field. Okay, great. My name is Yonel Munoz and I play every position and I'm a junior at Desert View High School. Okay. My name is Athena Munguia. I'm a catcher and center, and I'm going to Desiree High School. Okay, so we're going to get the mic straightened out. You two take that, you two take that, and you got your own mic, all right? <laughs> yeah. oh, my name is Maritza Mendeville. Um, I'm going to be a sophomore at Sawadita High School, and I play third in anywhere in the outfield. All right, great. So the nice thing I like, and this is a, this was like true with the uh, East Mesa Bandits yesterday, is you play different positions. The more positions you can play, the more valuable you are, not only to your own team, but when you start thinking about college scholarship, you can do it now. Up in Phoenix for our 602 Sports Talk show, I have Brandy Shriver as my co-host. Now, Brandy went down to school. She went to school here at U of A. She was a three-time All-American and won three national championships. So she definitely knows softball, but she lives up in the, in the Phoenix area. So she came down here playing soccer and softball. Coach Andrea said, you got to get rid of soccer. I want you all for softball. But she was a multi-sport athlete, and that made her more attractive as far as recruiting. So you don't have to get into another league. I know softball takes a lot of your time, but do exercises or go shoot baskets with your brother or your cousin. You know, do do stuff that – use muscles that don't you don't use in softball because everybody knows what happens when you don't use a muscle. It becomes sore, right? That's the body's way of telling you – Hey, you haven't used me in a while, you know. So one of the best tips I can give you guys as softball players, racquetball. You know why? Because it's lateral movement, especially if you're an infielder. Lateral movement. You're going back and forth very, very quickly. So that's a good sport to do. Maybe pick up, you know, go down with your brother or your dad or something. Play racquetball. Believe me, an hour of racquetball, you'll wring that shirt out from sweat because it's a, it's a very, very intense game. So... Let me ask you this. You're out of school, summer season's going on. Tell me individually, not team-wise, but individually, what's been your greatest accomplishment? I mean, did you make a diving catch? Did you rob somebody of a home run? Did you throw a no-hitter? Yeah, that type of thing. And anybody can start. You no, know, I'm just a catcher to a great pitcher, Candice. You never say I'm just a catcher because I'm sure you've got a cannon for an arm. <laughs> Nobody wants to run on you. <laughs> Who else? I just became a lefty like one month ago. Okay, cool. Biggest accomplishment this summer season? Um, I've gotten really good with my, better with my hitting. I got out of my slump. I hit two over this weekend. That's and, great. That's yeah. great. And we talked to Louie and Bruno about how you guys get better. It's all about development, development, development. They'll put you in a position to win or be competitive. You know, as long as you're listening to them. But it's more important to see you guys develop to go. You guys are 16 you? Okay, so, and I'm sure some of you guys are playing up, which is another good thing. Um, you know, if you're 8 years old, I want you playing in an 18 you league, you know. No, but I mean, I mean, seriously, if you're batting 600 at your own age group, you have no business staying in your own age group. You know, go to go up a couple notches and bat 280. You know, but learn the speed of the game. Learn, you know, the different nuances that older players are going to give you. The nice thing about you guys is that everybody practices with each other. So you got a 10-year-old playing with an 18-year-old. you got a 12-year-old playing with a 16-year-old. That's got to be really, really cool because everybody at one time was 10. They play in 10U. So you remember that, and you help the other players, you know, advance their skills, advance their thinking. Um, don't get down on themselves, you know, quickly. Because when you're 8, 9, 10 years old, you make a mistake. You know, it's the end of the world. You remember how, how it was when you guys were that age. Now you guys are like, eh, you know, I booted the ball. Probably going to get yelled at, but, you know, I'm going to put it out of my mind and, you know, on to the next batter. So. so let me ask you this. Give you an offense and a defensive situation. And see, and, and there's no wrong answers. So you just tell me. I just want to see where you guys are coming from. Tell me which one you'd rather be a part of. What was your main position? Um, third base. Third base, okay. Would you rather do a 5-4-3 double play to end the game and win or hit a walk-off home run? So one's defense, one's offense. Hit a walk-off. 
I'd rather hit a walk off. The walk off, okay. Main position. Um, catcher. Catcher. Would you rather catch a no hitter, or you're calling the you're calling the pitches, or would you rather hit a gapper to win the game on a walk off? Honestly, call the pitches because you feel powerful because you did it. Because it's a whole game. That's a good point. No, that's a good point. I'm a catcher. Okay, uh, would you rather throw a runner out at second base trying to steal to end the game and just kind of stare at him and like, yeah, <laughs> you're not going to do that again, are you? Or would you rather hit a bloop single to right field that scores the winning run? I'm going to throw it down a second. Nice. Um, I would have to choose um, defense because... No, what, what position are you? First. First, okay. First baseman usually have a big stick. And looking at you, you probably a, you got a big stick, okay? So you hit, you're down three runs. The bases are loaded. You hit a walk off grand slam to win the game, or you go three six three double play to win the game. Mm, I'd have to choose a double play. My girl, <laughs> nice. Um, I'm pitcher. Pitcher, okay. Um, finish the game with ten strikeouts. This is going to be, watch this one. Finish the game with 10 strikeouts, or the bases are loaded and the game's tied, and you have such a keen eye at the plate, they walk you to get the winning run in. Because you don't swing at any bad pitches. Oh, I don't know. That's a tough one. I saved the best for last. <laughs> what was the first one? 10 strikeouts. Because um, you're only facing 21 batters minimum. You know. Yeah. I say the 10 strikeouts. Okay. All right. Because that's over the course of a game. All good answers. And, then, you know, and then, like I said, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just I want to see if you're defensive-minded or offensive-minded. And both both are part of the game. I mean, it's just like, you know, in basketball, you got to shoot the ball, but you got to play defense and keep the other team from scoring. So, all right. So let's talk a little bit about school, Okay. School is very, very important. I'm sure Bruno, I'm sure Louie, I'm sure your coaches tell you that. You don't have to worry about grades right now because it's the summer, but I believe in a week or so you guys go back to school. All right, and then when you start playing school ball, you got to stay eligible, okay? Getting good grades is not to stay eligible. That's not the, that's not the reason to get good grades. Do we all agree with that? Getting good grades, especially in high school, go to Desert View or the other schools you go to, it's about preparing you for college. College will prepare you for adulthood. Okay. These four years in high school and these four years in college, eight years, best years of your life. Where to God. All right? You're on your parents' dime. You don't have to pay for much. You know, you don't you have responsibilities, you got chores and stuff, but you don't have to go out and get a job. I mean school's kind of your job and stuff like that. When you get out of college, man, life changes a lot. It really does. So enjoy these eight years. But I want to talk to you about school, okay? So Give me your best subject in school, and we don't say worse because we're not like that here on 5 Kilo Sports Talk. Give me the subject that mom and dad probably sat you down this summer and say, you got to kind of get this grade up a little bit. I think the subject that I did really good in was probably history. Okay. And I still need a lot of work in math because I'm not strong with math at okay. all. Okay. All right. Okay. How many groups? My favorite subject would probably be math, and the one I need to work on is history. My best subject was math, and my hardest one was science. Okay, so she's not good at math, and you are, so you got to help each other out. <laughs> Remember, it's, it's family, right? Whether you're playing softball or school. And you guys probably go to the same school, I would imagine. I mean, you got Desert View Colors on at school, and you got Desert View Colors on at club. <laughs> Um, my best subject would probably be science, okay. but like mostly bi biology. Okay. But my worst is probably math. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this: Do you want to go into like the medical field? I mean, how do you want to? Um, I actually do. I want to be a marine biologist or like a vet. Okay. So that's going to take biology, which you excel in, but it's also going to take math. So okay. they, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, I'd say my best subject was probably um, math and okay. science, or math right. or science, and I'd say my worst was probably something like history. Like okay, all right. 
history is fun. I mean, I liked history, but history doesn't play a big part in adult life unless you want to be a teacher or like an archaeologist or something like that. So, all right. So kind of keeping with the school theme, but kind of transitioning a little bit into athletics. Everybody here obviously plays club ball for one reason. You want to get a college scholarship. You want to take the burden financially off your parents so you can go to school for free. So you guys are 16 You, I mean, you got time to change your mind. But at this point in time, tell me, look at the academics at a particular school and the athletics because they say, hey, I want to go to Florida State, but they don't have the degree I want. Well, you're not going to Florida State then, you know. So look, think about what degree you want to get and look at their softball time, the squad, and tell me your dream college to go to play softball with. I think I'm stuck between Washington State or UCLA. Washington State or UCLA, both good programs. UCLA especially. Um, I would say UCLA or the U of A. UCLA, U of A, well, number one and number two in national championships. I'll say Pima maybe. Pima's a great school. Rebecca, Re Rebecca, Jen, Nikki, and now Taylor. Taylor McQuillan's going to be on the pitching set. Um, they're going to mold you. The nice thing about JC, a lot of people are like, oh, you're playing JC ball. You're playing. How many freshmen go to the U of A and play for Mike Candrea? How many freshmen go to ASU and play for Coach Ford? you got to be really, really, you know, when you're in JC, you're playing. you got two years, freshman and sophomore, then you're going to go to four-year school. So that's a good, that's a good um, attitude to have, and there's nothing wrong with JC ball, especially here at Pima. Coach Giros is one of the best coaches uh, in all of Arizona in the junior college ranks? Um, I would want to start at Pima, then transfer to the University of Hawaii. Nice. Rainbow Warrior, all right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel good like marine biology, too. <laughs> I would go to a junior college first. Okay, that's good. And then I would try to transition into like a university or something, like UCLA. Or okay. I you know, and there's, there's a lot to be said for junior colleges. I did the same thing. I mean, I got a scholarship to put, you know, in, in for sports, but I didn't like where I was at. Came back here, went to Pima, got my prereqs done. I mean, what, go to Pima is a lot cheaper, especially if you're on well, if you're on scholarship, you're on scholarship. Get those prerequisites done your freshman and sophomore year, then you're ready to concentrate on your degree, on your junior and senior year. It's a lot easier. Most of most of not all of Pima's classes will transfer to any college, so. Those, you too, those, that's, a good, uh, that's a good mindset. So not that there's anything going wrong with going to a four-year school, but getting your prereqs at a JC just it makes life a lot easier. So, Rebecca, you know I'm going to put a plug in for you every time. So, All right. So let's do what, a funny? Let's do a funny question. You guys travel. Can't travel without a vehicle, right? Vehicle can't go anywhere without gas, right? You know where I'm going with this? <laughs> Gotta go to the gas station, right? What's your favorite gas station food and drink? <laughs> QT, Circle K, whatever. <laughs> you can start. You're going to Phoenix to play a tournament, you're going to San Diego, you're stopping at QT or Circle K. What what are you going to get? Um, I go and get um, Arizona tea and Hot Cheetos, basically. Hot Cheetos and Arizona iced tea. It's a good combination. <laughs> Definitely healthy. Um, I would say Circle K and get a big Polar Pop, uh, Fox Pepper, and Turbos. Turbos, okay. I'll get Takis and the Powerade. Takis and what? Powerade. And Powerade, okay. What color? <laughs> All right, Hot Shot. <laughs> I would get Dynamite Takis and a Gatorade. <laughs> okay. I tried Takis for the first time. I'm going to be honest with you. Not a big fan. Maybe I got the wrong flavor. I don't know. <laughs> it tasted like they had like dust in them or something. Um, I would say mine's Arizona tea and hot Cheetos. Nice. Let me tell you a little funny story from last night's show up in Chandler. Uh, we had this. Uh, we had the, Arizona, or the East Mesa Bandits on the, the 16 and 18 U team. And I asked them the same question. This blonde hair girl she goes I like the hot fry I'm just like look at the blonde hair girl eating the hot stuff <laughs> it was great it was a good time thank you again uh, East Mesa Bandits so 
All right, so let's ask. Let's kind of keep on the food thing and ask you this. Give me your two favorite places to eat. It can be fast food. It can be a restaurant. It can be Nana's Tacos or whatever. Give me two of two your favorites. One and two. You got to get rid of one the rest of your life. We'll start with you. Um, I'd say my favorite two would be uh, Olive Garden. Olive Garden, okay. And Chick Fil A. All right, which one goes? Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A <laughs> goes, and she wants to eat on Sunday. You can't eat a Chick Fil A on Sunday. <laughs> Uh, mine is Olive Garden and, well, McDonald's. But okay, which one goes? McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's, all right. They like that Olive Garden over at the promenade. <laughs> uh, Buffalo and McDonald's and McDonald's go go. Smart girl. <laughs> I would say Subway and Al Nene. Subway and what? Al Nene. Okay. Um, Subway would have to go. Yeah, Subway's got to go. <laughs> Good choice. I would say Canes and Subway. Canes or Subway, okay. And, and right now you got to go to the east side to get Canes. They're building one up on Speedway, and I think they're building one up in Marana by where I live. But that's a long drive from the Desert View area. <laughs> All right, so which one goes? Canes. Canes, you're out of here. <laughs> All right, so I didn't get a chance because uh, we started the show early just because uh, Scrambler Nation brought – everybody in the south side of I mean, if you're a burglar right now you can probably break into <laughs> the whole south side here no that's great once again um, mr producer why don't you pan the crowd real quick and scrambler nation give yourselves a big hand for showing up in force there's close to 100 people here and this is by far the biggest attendance show that we've had this year so we want to thank uh bruno and louis gonzalez and all the people that run the scrambler organization okay so i didn't get a chance to do a lot of pre uh, pre-show instructions but i'm not sure if you guys know have you ever watched the 520 sports talk show before once. once okay this is a nationwide broadcast we use facebook because a lot of people that live in southern arizona are not from here i'm from san diego but so anybody and everybody that live in america can watch you so if you have friends or family if not on top to live in phoenix or el paso or la or something you know, or you have friends that live in Chicago, here's your chance to say hi. Or even if they're just in Tucson, you got a chance to shout out. Pets are included. We had a fish named Gary last night that got a shout out. I give a shout out to my mom because she's not out of state. She's just at home. And she's not here. So. But she's your mom and you love her. Yeah. There you go. I want to give a shout out to my mom, my dad, and my pretty much my entire family because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be on the journey that I am right now. All right, so let me cut in real quick, okay? All right, we're all Hispanic here, okay? You can't forget Nana because you know what happens when you forget <laughs> Nana? Ever had that chancla fly by your head? <laughs> Nana's got a better arm than any of your outfielders. <laughs> I'll give one to my dad. He's not here. He couldn't make it. All right. Um, I want to give a shout out to Ariana. She's in Colorado. She Is she there. watching? Um, I don't know. I if think. she's not, let me give you a quick hit because we didn't have time to do pre-show instructions. At the end of this broadcast, we publish it and we put it on the Five Two Zero Sports Talk Facebook page. That only not that only lets you know not only lets you guys go home and watch yourselves, but every every smart TV in the world now has a Facebook app on it. So all you got to do is fire up your Facebook account, 520 Sports Talk in the search bar, choose the room, and you guys can watch yourself. And share it to your own Facebook page. I know Facebook's for old people. I mean, I've been told by that, by kids your age. But I'm sure your parents have it. Share it to the Scrambler page. Share it to everybody. I'm going to give you, you guys, because you guys brought so many people, I'm going to give you guys a challenge, and I'll, I'll give every group this. 4,000 views is the all-time high in the history of 5TO Sports Talk. We've been doing this for three years. That's the Miranda football team in 2016. We just had our, we just had our second most watched show, the BMX kids, the, right, the crazy bikes and stuff, at Sports Park up in Marana. They had 3,500 views. I'm challenging you guys to become the number one show, or the number one viewed show of all time. You gotta crack the 4,000 mark, which means you gotta share, 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 share this broadcast to everybody and anybody Call your friends, tell them to watch it, because I would be very, very proud as a host to say, hey, 
the scramblers. Louie was my boss on the fire department. So I would, I would be really, really proud to say, hey, the scramblers are the top dog now. So. Who's next? Shout out. Um, What's the question? <laughs> I'll shout out my Theo and Thea. So hopefully they're still watching. And just shout out to my whole family in general because they're always there for me, supporting me, bringing me up when I'm down with anything. So, yeah. You know, I planted the seed and still nobody said Nana. <laughs> so you, when you go home, those chanclas are going to be flying by your head. You forgot me, Mihi. Miha, you forgot me. <laughs> All right. Can I get one more shout out? Sure. Is it to a fish or a pet? or? <laughs> I'd want to give a shout out to my mom because she's a very strong woman and every step of the way the entire team has been right next to her supporting her. That's great. <laughs> you guys are very, very impressive. You're very mature beyond your years, uh, probably because you're playing up. And I wish you the best of luck. Have Bruno or one of the guys give me a, if you guys play a tournament here in town or in Phoenix, uh, let us know. We'll, we'll cover it. Either 520 or 602 Sports Talk, my Phoenix company. Uh, we'll go up and cover. I'd love to cover a scram Scrambler's uh, softball and watch you guys just take it all. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, coming in, and best of luck. Keep those grades up. Listen to your parents, and don't forget Nana. <laughs> all, right. all right, so we're changing up groups here. Let's finish up with the sponsors here. Such a great crowd tonight. I'm really, really impressed by this organization and uh, really uh, happy on the turnout for uh, Garrett and uh, Jody Raitsman. Uh, simply noted, mixing modern marketing techniques with an old school personal touch, expand your business footprint by going to simplynoted.com. Now this is owned by former U of A stud linebacker Rick Elmore. Uh, he just went on LinkedIn the other day. His company is growing by leaps and bounds because of the fact if you're a small business owner, he can get your name out there faster, quicker, and more effective than a lot of other ways through social media or whatnot. He uses handwritten notes along with social media, so even in this day and age of technology, the handwritten note still goes a long, long ways in, uh, in attracting customers. I'm going to give you our Phoenix, our 602 sponsor, because I'm telling you, if you ever want to take your wife, your girlfriend, uh, your mom to a great dinner, and it's a nice drive, uh, it's, you go to Cave Creek, which is north of Scottsdale. It's called Cartwright's Modern Cuisine. It's at 6710 East Cave Creek Drive, north of Scottsdale. You just take 10 to 101, 101 to Scottsdale Road. Just go north, and uh, you follow the signs. You'll see it. What a great place to eat. I mean, this is probably some of the best meals I've ever had there uh, are, at, are at Cartwright's Modern Cuisine. It's not just a restaurant. It's an Arizona dining experience. Arizona Motor Vehicle Express, 6741 North Thornydale, just north of the Costco in Marana. Believe me, I've used this place like three or four times. Nobody wants to go to the DMV and spend three hours to get a driver's license or get your tags. Arizona Motor Vehicle Express can do everything the DMV can. I think the longest I've ever been there was 20 minutes. I paid them an extra 15 bucks, and I and I got out of there. And, you know, believe me, my time is worth more a lot more than $15. So... Definitely check them out. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, Saturday, 9 to 3, and they're just north of the Costco uh, on Thornydale Drive. So thank you very much. Sponsors, we appreciate your sponsorship. Now, next month we're going to have a couple of sponsors come back that took the summer off for vacations and whatnot. Uh, Sparkle Cleaners will be back with us, and uh, Chiba Hut will be back with us. So thank you, guys. What's up, fellas? Hey, hey, I going? think the girls are doing great so far. I don't know if you guys know it, uh, Louie was my boss of the fire department for many, many years. Oh, so, uh, nice, nice. And I know Bruno since he was old enough to walk, so, uh, <laughs> so that just kind of dates me, you know. <laughs> so, ah. so let's start with you, Coach. Give us your name and what your role is with the uh, organization. So my name is uh, Frank Lopez, and um, I'm one of the 18U. Of course, we help out uh, all together with the Scrambler family, 14, sure. 16, 18. Um, help out overall practices and uh, and overall fundraising and everything. Uh, just a parent that's very involved, very happy to be with the scramblers. You know, that's great. And there's a lot to be said for people like you and, and, and the other coaches. Is you're not getting paid. You're volunteering your time. Uh, whether your daughter plays on the team or did play on the team and has moved on, or even if you don't have anybody that you know that's on the team, you guys giving you your time 
speaks volumes of of just your dedication to youth sports and and watching these kids grow. I mean, it's probably the neatest thing to watch them grow from you know a, a brand new player that doesn't really know anything to an experienced 18 new player that's ready to go set the world on fire at a, at a college. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's that's kind of what uh, the Scrambler organization stands for. You know, accepting anyone that wants to come learn play ball and compete at the you know at all the different levels so we take a lot of great pride in that oh, that's great so um do you guys also uh do you guys help out at schools like desert view with, with bruno or do, I mean, do you guys do any school ball well um, i'm fabian Guillen and yeah i i, I am i'm assistant coach head uh, assistant coach at the uh, the floodwell high school oh okay cool yeah. cool so right. let me ask you this since you guys are involved not only in school ball but club ball as well as we all know, a lot more talent on club teams. I mean, it's a collection of all-stars. You're the best of the best at your positions. But it's all got to start somewhere, and most of the time it starts either in Little League or in school ball. And so how do you how do you get your girls playing school ball ready for the club scene? Um, well, I mean, that's 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 a, a good question. Um, I'm, I'm Renee Ayala. Well, I, I also, get paid the big money, brother. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I figured. As I figure, I'm ready to also help out uh, Bruno at the 18 U level, and sure. as well as uh, you know all the other all the rest of the organization. Um, you know, me, I, I personally um, recently just got out of little league because um, my daughter's got to a certain age. But uh, sure. but I worked with I worked with a bunch of little leaguers all the way through. Uh, my daughter Jasmine Ayala was part of uh, uh, the Junior League World Series as well, as well as a bunch of other um, talented ladies that went on to play college ball. So. Um, we, you know, we start there, and you just teach them and grow them, and then get them into the competitive level. And if, and if they uh, accept it and and willing to put in the hard work, which it does take a lot of hard work, then uh, they can be successful at it. You know, and there's a lot to be said for little league. I love the little leagues because uh -huh. not every parent can afford to be on the club. You're right. And it doesn't matter if you're sitting on the bench or you're starting; you're still paying the same amount on club. Right. Yeah. Where little league gives you a chance to get your feet wet, get your confidence up, you know, and then. Uh, there's, I mean, I'm sure you guys do it. I know there's a lot of club uh, teams. Last night we were up at Fien, up at Chandler, and and the East Mesa Bandits. Um, East Mesa is not the most, you know, affluent part of the of the East Valley. They help them, you know. If they're not, they're they're hundred dollars short on their dues, you know. They, yeah. They'll do a fundraiser to pitch in, so the kids can still play. And that yeah. and that's the name of the game. Is, I mean, at the end of the day, doesn't matter if you're softball, football, basketball, baseball. It's all about having fun. Yeah, uh, you know. It's all about your community helping each other out, helping each other out. That's a, that's a big point, the community. I like that. That's one thing that the South Side has always had. Um, you know, I, I, I cover, you know, I cover the sunny sides of Pueblos, the Desert Views, the Choyas. Awesome. And you may have, you know, brother, I mean, you may have cousins across the street. One goes to Sunny Side, one goes to Desert View, or one goes to Pueblo. You know, and it's still a community thing where everybody kind of helps each other. Uh, that's, there's a lot to be said for that. Yes, because sir. that doesn't happen in all parts of the city, as you know, exactly. and stuff. I mean, I think I think what's fun that I see a lot um, whenever the girls, whether they play club ball or little league or whatnot, they play on different teams. But when they when they play school ball or when they're together at school, when it comes at the end of a tournament or end of a game, I mean, it, there's a lot of um, how do you say a lot of friendship between the girls, even though right. they're not on the same team. And I think that's really cool. And I, and I think that carries over to school ball too. I mean, I I've been to the last two Sunnyside Pueblo mm. uh, matchups, and Pueblo won the first one a couple years ago for the first time since '93. Yeah. And, I mean, I looked up in the stands, and I just you know alumni parents just tears because they got the <laughs> monkey off their back. You know, Brandon Sanders is doing a really right. good job uh, there. He sees now he's concentrating on on just football, but uh, yeah. you know they're you know they they were down for a long time. Pueblo was down yep. for a long time. Uh, Sunny side, sunny side. I mean, you know, <laughs> what are you going to say? Desert View, the, you guys have made your own mark there. Yep. Um, you know, you have a lot to be proud of. You've got state championships. And, uh, you know, you're not a new school anymore, but compared to the sunny sides and the Pueblos that I think, uh, you know, God went to high school there. So you're still <laughs> relatively new. So. Yeah. so I was talking to Bruno and Louie about this. I want to ask you guys the same question since you guys are both involved, you know, involved in school and, and club. Right now it's summer. You don't have to worry about academics and stuff. But school's going to start in a couple weeks. Um, you guys will go dark at the end of the year. They're going to start you know, their, their school ball and stuff. What, what message do you tell them that, you know, you're a student athlete. You're not an athlete student. 
Well, I mean, it's it's hard to communicate that to the to the ladies, especially during the summertime. Yeah, during the right summer. Now, yeah, during the summertime. Got to play at that season. Oh, you, yeah. oh, you have to. I mean, I personally, like I said, I got daughters on the, uh, on the team, and uh, you know, I, I'm just encouraging them to read and get their mind focused on a little bit of you know maybe a uh, news that's going on, current events and stuff like that, and get the mind going. Um, but but we definitely preach to them about their grades and and trying to be um, role models as far as that aspect goes, because. It, to the higher level that you go and playing ball, it's going to be off or not if you don't. Uh, That's true. If you don't pull the grades through, and uh, and a college isn't able to accept you. Now I, I told the first group of kids, I said I don't know, I expect you to guys to go out and sign up for a league because I know softball takes a majority of your time. But I'm like racquetball is a very good sport if you're an infielder because of the lateral movement back movement. and forth. Um, Twenty eight of the la- of the of the thirty one first round draft picks in the NFL were multi sport athletes. There's a lot to be said for using those muscles that your primary sport doesn't use. And I told him, I'm like, what happens when you don't use a muscle? It becomes sore. That's your body's way of telling you, hey, you haven't used me in a while. So sure. I told him, I said, you know, on a, on a time off or on a day off, go shoot baskets with your brother or your cousin or something. Or, you know, play racquetball, play tennis, go run around the track, you know. Do something to, to you know, enhance that muscle group. Because as coaches, parents, you know, co-host of the show, last thing I want to see is somebody tearing Achilles do an ending, in, you know, a career-ending injury because of the fact that you know certain muscles groups weren't used. Exactly. You're right. You're right. Our other coach, uh, Mikey Gonzalez, that uh, he, he wasn't able to be with us right now, but um, he he had to go home for work. But uh, but he encourages the girls to run all the time sure. and, and stay busy and and stay in shape and stuff like that. So he's a good motivator as far as that goes. Right. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We want the girls to get a college scholarship, take the financial burden off the parents play the game that they love and now they have the avenue of playing professional softball that maybe wasn't around exactly. when their when their mom played for the scramblers or something and i think i think overall just um keeping the kids busy you know right. you give you give kids a little bit of time and unfortunately i mean you know we live we live uh, overall you know how can i say it? we were all young at one time you know? yeah, kids we are kids at the time, exactly yeah. so i mean you keep them busy like I say, you keep them focused. I mean, that's probably the best thing for them. Um, you know, they're going to want to have fun. They're going to want to have fun. But at the same time, like I said, just try to keep them focused overall with grades, uh, school. And, and, of course, if you can be, you know, in, in, uh, in a program or, uh, you know, an athletic program oh, exactly. or something. That's a, that's that's a, a great thing, point. Yeah. That's a great point. And, and what, I, what I have, like, mad respect for with, with Louie and, and Bruno is it's family. You know, like I had to do, we had this question for the girls up here. What's your best subject? What's the subject you got to work on the most? You know, well, I'm not good in math. Well, I'm good in math over here. Well, you guys, family doesn't just do football. You guys got to help each other out academically. Most of the kids go to Desert View, so, yeah. you know, they're going to see each other on an everyday basis. Yeah. You know, and just kind of, you know, help preach that message out. that it's not just softball. It's academics. And if you can help the other person out, by all means, here's your opportunity. For sure. For sure. All right, thank you, coaches, very much. Appreciate right, it. Thank you. I got thank mad you. respect yeah. for this organization. Appreciate what you do as well. I've been getting, trying to get you guys off for three years. So I finally <laughs> got you. Right, you guys it. know how to represent, so we no, really definitely. appreciate it. A scrambler family. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start off uh, with the uh, 18U team, I think, now. We're going to get them up there. Once again, thank you for the sponsorship. Um, tomorrow's show that was originally scheduled for Frog and Furkin here tomorrow with the 04 Royals, uh, Coach Ray Camacho, who's an assistant coach under Mike Candrea at the University of Arizona. We're going to reschedule that. There was a scheduling conflict uh, here at the Frog, and I wasn't able to, to land another venue. So we're going to reschedule them. They're going to be right back here at the Frog, and uh, we're going to also get their take on the club scene. Once again, the Royals, one of the better, uh, one of the better club teams and organizations uh, in Tucson. So come on up, ladies. I guess if your name's Mike, you can sit there. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. How are you guys doing? Good in yourself. I'm doing well. I'm a little, little warm up here, but it's Arizona, right? You just got to take the good with the bad. All right. So first of all, let me let me say how proud and how honored I am to have you and your teammates on the show. I've been trying to get you guys on for three years. We've been doing this in 2016. I knew Bruno when he was just starting to walk, and Louie was my boss of the fire department. So, I mean, I've known the Gonzalez family for probably since the early 80s. So, so really, really honored to have you guys. You guys aren't nervous, are you? I mean, this is a nationwide broadcast. I don't want to make you nervous. Okay, so you two with that, Mike. 
You two with this mic, you two with that mic, okay? <laughs> Give us your name, where you go to school. I'm sure you all go to Desert View, but never though. No, okay, right, we got some We got some, uh, some foreign schools coming up. Name, school, and positions. Um, I'm Jasmine. I graduated from Sunnyside High School. I'm a pitcher and a shortstop. I'm Maya. I graduated from Desert View High School, and I'm a second baseman. Okay. Um, I'm Faith. I go to Desert View, and I'm a first baseman and pitcher. I'm Kit. I go to Walden Grove, and I'm a catcher and outfield. All right. A little 919 action here. <laughs> um, I'm Shay, and I graduated from Flowing Wells, and I play center field. Okay. I'm Eva, and I play outfield. Okay, so you're a senior, right? No, I'm a junior. Junior? Okay, so you're playing up. Yeah. Mad respect right there. <laughs> All right, so I'm sure you know when you get 18, you it's not really you can't really play up. There's no 20 you, you know. So, so but you guys played up during the course of your scrambler career, I'm sure. And the way that they described it, you're playing up anyways because the 10 year olds are practicing with the 18 year olds. So everybody was 10 at one time. Everybody <laughs> tripped over their own feet. They didn't know anything about softball, and now you guys are ready to set the world on fire at your respective colleges. So. My line of questioning to you guys is going to be a little bit different than, than the younger group. So um, those of you who graduated, if you know where you're going to go to college or you signed your letter or something like that, uh, let us know. Those of you who have not signed a letter or don't know where you're going to go, give me your dream school. But think about it athletically and academically. I mean, I'm not going to go to Nebraska and take marine biology. Okay, so, so think about both those things and where would you like to go to school if you have not already signed. Um, I signed to Pima Community College, and I'm studying in business management. You are going to have such a good time with Rebecca and, and Jen and Nikki and Taylor. And hey, um, Seuss. Hey, Seuss, we love you. You know, he's, he's a 919 guy. <laughs> I am attending um, Pima Community College, but I will not be playing softball. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to focus on my career right now. So you're going to be uh, like a surgeon? Make like a million dollars a year? Um, Sure. There you go. No, that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. And the thing is, a scholarship's a scholarship. Whether it's an academic scholarship or an athletic scholarship, you're still taking the burden off your parents as far as paying for school. Going to Pima, going to a JC has a lot of advantages. It's a lot easier to get your prerequisites done. Um, if you're not on scholarship, it's not as expensive as going to the U or ASU or a four-year school. And if you are playing softball at a JC, you're playing. You're not sitting on the bench. Because you got two years to make a mark. Freshman play, sophomore play, and then they kick you out and you go to a four-year. Um, well, I'm really going to be a junior, and I want to go to ASU, but my dream school was always NYU, and I want to be a pediatrician. You're going to go all the way across the country to play softball? No. Oh. I'm not. <laughs> NYU, isn't that New York University? Yeah, but I just want to go for academics. So. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. yeah don't, no, I'm just going for academics. Yeah. Academics, honey, is going to what's going to make you an yeah. adult. Because as we all know, there's going to become a time and a day where you got to hang up the spikes, put the bat away, because you're just your body's not going to be able to compete at the level that you're used to competing now. So don't ever say just academics, because I have a lot of respect for that. Um, well, I got academic scholarship to NAU, which I hope to play uh, club softball since I don't have a softball team. Well, that's I'll be cool. Studying, uh, athletic training. Good, good deal. You know, the nice thing about ASU or NAU is U of A hates ASU, ASU hates NA, or U of A. Everybody likes NAU. Yeah, with, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who hates it's like Grand that? Canyon and NAU. Everybody likes them. <laughs> um, I got a softball and academic scholarship to Embry-Riddle. And Love Embry-Riddle. I went to Prescott last year to cover uh, one of the teams. I don't know if you ever heard of Bailey Critchlow. She was a two-time All-American at Pima under uh, – under Becca's dad when he was still the coach and she finished off this was her senior year she finished off at every riddle aeronautic university we actually went up and did a double header I'd live streamed it I told her I said I don't have enough battery in that thing to do a double header so I'm gonna do the first game so do what you do she had a walk off home run I'm like how cool is this <laughs> every riddle is a great university um, I'm a junior so I, I would like to go probably somewhere like Washington or Seattle because when sure. I visit, like okay. I found love with the place. Okay, so you like rain and coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. No, no, no wrong answers here on the Five Field Sports Talk Show. All right, so 
let me ask you this, because you guys all played school ball, you all play club ball. There's no wrong answers. I know what I, how I feel, you know, but I grew up in a different generation. We played seasonal sports. I went from football to basketball to baseball. There was no club. There was no playing. I mean, I can't imagine playing football year round. I mean, I'd probably be in a wheelchair, but you know, but uh, you know, there wasn't the advantages that you guys have with with club ball and and, and, and things like that. So. Let me ask you this, and it's kind of an old school, new school answer. It depends on where you where you're coming from. Club ball is in a collection of the best of the best. You guys are an all star team, just like just like any club team is. High school, not as much talent, but there's still a lot to play for. So, would you rather win a state championship and get that ring, or would you rather win a really high profile club tournament? I would rather um, win a national championship, okay. personally, because like you said, the best of the best in ASA. So I think more competition, so it's more of a challenge. So I feel like if you were to win a national championship, then okay. you. Good answer. Yeah, I'd have to agree with Jasmine. I would like to win a national championship because like she said, it's the best of best. And I feel like I mean, if you're in it, then you're obviously there to get competition and more work. So if you win it, then you obviously deserve it. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I would also agree um, because obviously if you win, then you know you're in the best of the best, but you're obviously like the best if you win. Um, Yeah, it's just overall like the competition, it's higher and everything. And I'm going to follow up with the same line of questioning on my second question. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, Honestly, I probably win for my school. Just... For the same, like, I like the best of the best, but my school is really young, so if we were to win, like, the champion, like, the state championship sure. like that, I feel like that'd be, the amount of, like, respect and, like, te- like, school pride, I think, would be, like, the best feeling ever. Okay, good answer. Um, I would say a national championship for club ball, because I just think that's cooler, I guess. <laughs> okay. I agree with her. Uh, it's the best of the best, so you're able to compete against the better. Sure, okay. You want to know my take on it? I'd rather win a state championship. And you know why? Okay. Because I went to high school in Tucson. I live in Tucson. And I did win a state championship in basketball. And I still run into people at Fry's and Safeway and QT and stuff that I not only played with, but I played against. And I don't have my state championship ring on right now, but I'm just like, (laughs) remember when I kicked your ass? (laughs) You know, because I see these people. Tucson's the biggest small town in America. We got a million people, but everybody still knows everybody. And you can still walk. I mean, I'm old, and I can still walk in and like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> Where if you win a national championship, you may not see those other people ever again. So, like I said, not a wrong answer. It's just kind of a, a different perspective. And, and coming from an old school perspective, when you win a state championship, you're playing for what's right here. Sunnyside, Flowing Wells, Desert View, Tucson, okay? When, you know... You're playing, not, you, you won that championship not only for your team, your school, but everybody that's ever gone to that school in the history of that school. And being Southside kids, a lot of you, Sunnyside, Pueblo, two of the oldest schools in Tucson. Okay, Flowing Well is a very old school. You know, Amphi is an old school and stuff. So, so you're, I, I'll give you a prime example. I went to the Pueblo Sunnyside football game two years ago. Pueblo hadn't run since 1993. It's, 2000, it's 2017. They beat Sunnyside. I looked in the stands. Everybody's crying on the point, you know, because mom and dad, they got their butts kicked by Sunnyside, you know, back in the 80s. Their kids, when they went through the 90s, all in the 2000s and stuff, everybody that had to suffer losses to the Blue Devils finally got redemption. And it's like the weight of the world is off your shoulders for one season, and you can go talk smack. <laughs> so so do you, do you understand the difference between the two? They're both great, and like I said, there's no wrong answers. It's just, I just want to see where you guys are coming from, and, and that, those are all good answers. So, let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you some situational questions. How many more groups do we have? Oh, okay. Oh, let me spend a little more time. It's, it's summer, right? No school, no curfew, no homework? All right, my buddies. Nice, all right. And did we say not save the best for laugh? What? Yeah. What? Yeah. All right. All right. Main position. Uh, left fielder. Love outfield. That was a left fielder and a right fielder. Okay. Ball hooks to left field. Ball slices at right field. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
This is, once again, no wrong answers. It's just kind of a defensive versus offensive scenario. Just want to see where your mind is, okay? Rob somebody of a home run at the fence by catching it or hitting a walk-off gapper? Catching. Win the game. catching it. Beautiful. Main position. Center field. Oh, you got the gun for the arm, huh? You're captain of the outfield. All right. That's an easy question. <laughs> Throw somebody out on the fly and just kind of stare at them when they look up and they're like, where the heck did you get that arm from? <laughs> or hit a bloop single to right field to win the game. Probably throw them out. <laughs> love that girl. Main position. Right field. <laughs> I love right fielders. You know, it's kind of funny. Right field is a very important position. But when you're growing up as kids, it's like, oh, you're bad. Just go to right field, you know. Because <laughs> most people are right-handed batters. It's <laughs> yeah. not, not, not true nowadays. and stuff. Because right field gets as much action as, as any of the outfield. Like all the foul balls over there. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And they're slicing away from you, so you got to do a lot of diving. So... All right, right field, nice. You cut off a ball in the right center gap, and you throw the runner out at second trying to stretch a single. Or you hit a uh, walk-off home run. Well, I've never hit a home run, so I think I should pick the home run. Good answer, <laughs> good answer. I asked a slapper that question last night in Chandler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, first. First. First, okay. Um, You line the right fielder up on the pl on the relay to home, and you throw the runner out to end the game. Game's over. You walk off. Both of you, she's running in. You're turning around. You're just both glaring at him. It's like, yeah, you're not going to try that again, sister. Or the bases are loaded. The game is tied, and you're such a good hitter at the plate that you don't swing at bad pitches, and you end up getting a walk to force the runner in, and you get an RBI, and the game's over. I would say to throw out. There you go. Love my defense. <laughs> Second base. Second base. Second base doesn't get a lot of love because the shortstop's got the big arm and you know and everything like. Oh, you have a short. You have a short throw to first. You have a short throw to second. Yeah. I love second base one. Four six three double play to end the game. Or a gapper to win the game. I'd probably do the double play. My girl. All right. Um, I'm a pitcher. Pitcher. How are you with your stick? Pretty good. Power? Power or spray hitter? Power. Okay. That's an easy one. Throw a no hitter? Yes. I'll hit a walk-off grand slam. Throw a no hitter or hit a walk off grand Probably slam. Probably a walk off grand slam. Wow, though no hitters are in the horse cars of the whole yeah. game. You're gonna take it all in one bat. Nice, yeah. nice. All right, good answers. Good answers. You guys having fun? Yeah. You know, and that's the big thing about softball. At the end of the day, isn't sports about having fun? I mean, if I go out, I don't, I don't like golf for a reason because I suck at it. You know, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm very, I'm very competitive as you guys are. So if I can't get good at a sport in a relatively quick amount of time, I lose interest in it. Yeah. Golf is not the game that you can get quick at very quickly. Plus, it's very expensive. So I really, really respect golfers for what they do or what they can do. I can't do it, but I'm gonna, I'll rock you. I'll rock your boat from an outside linebacker position and say you better make yourself comfortable down there when you're on the ground. You know, so. Competitive nature is nice, but at the end of the game, whether you're a football, basketball, softball, baseball, tennis player, it's about having fun. You guys, you guys, you're still in high school, but the rest of your year you're out. You still have to worry about the grades going to JC, going to four year, okay? We all know as young adults that grades are not to stay eligible. That's not the reason to get good grades, okay? Um, you also know that a college scholarship is anywhere from eighty to one hundred thousand dollars a year, depending on your school. No school is going to waste their scholarship money on a fringe student. Yeah, you're getting B's and C's. I don't know if you're going to be eligible. You know, they don't want to worry about that. You know, Becca doesn't want to worry about that. Coach Candrea doesn't want to worry about that. So you guys all know the importance being older about the grades. So I'll put the soapbox away. Okay. <laughs> all right. Funny question. God, I use the good ones on the young kids. I gotta think what good. Ones. Here, let me ask you this, because you're right on the cusp of being a kid to being an adult. Okay? So 
What's the hardest thing about being a kid? And it's a two-part question. And what do you look forward to the most to being an adult? <laughs> Anybody can start. I got one. Okay. Okay. I think the hardest part is uh, trying to find a ride to go everywhere because you can okay. never give yourself a ride. Before you could drive? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the best part is uh, being able to drive. Okay. <laughs> so so really check this out. I live in Marana. I live at McGee and, and, and I-10. He lives over by 49ers Country Club, which is like on the way to Reddington Pass. Guess who had to drive to pick him up tonight to come to the show? <laughs> so I know all about that. <laughs> um, I think the hardest part about being a kid is having to follow your parents' rules in the okay. household. <laughs> all right. And as an adult, you're kind of like on your own. You're free to do like whatever your heart desires. <laughs> That's true, but it also comes a double-edged snort. You're also free to screw up, <laughs> and then you all have you only have yourself to blame. You can't go, oh, well, I didn't do what mom and dad said, so I'm in trouble. It's like I didn't do what I should have done, and I'm in trouble. So, uh, mine's kind of the same, like the rules, but having more of a voice, like when you're an okay. adult. So, like that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay. Um, I would say, well, I'm like really scared to become an adult, honestly. No, but, I mean, there's nothing wrong um, with that. There's got to be a little apprehension. Yeah. I would say the hardest part is they say, like, enjoy your childhood and this sure. and that, but you also have rules, just how they said. So it's kind of hard to, you know, enjoy when you also need to follow certain things. Now, so, now let me ask you this, and Severin, or actually I'll just say it. I asked you what the hardest thing about being a kid. The best thing about being a kid's got to be you're on your parents' dime. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't have to pay for anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I went over to our friend Sean's house, and, and he's like, hey, boys, we get free pizza tonight. And he goes, and they're like, all food is free, you know, because, you know, parents are paying for it. <laughs> um, you kind of took my answer. I was going to say... You can still say it. Oh. <laughs> well. You're the one that's got the gun for the arm, man. I, I don't mess with you center fielders. <laughs> um, when you're a kid, everything's free, but then when you grow up, you have to work for your money. That's true. That's true. Very true. I was going to say things, the same thing as Maya, because, like, you have rules as when you're when you're younger so you're not able to like be as free as some of the things that you want to do sure but then it also like you're also like oh i'm so glad i didn't do that when that's true and you got to remember when you have rules and when you have restrictions as a kid they're for a reason they're to teach you value they're to teach you responsibility and they're to teach you to be accountable for your actions um you guys have heard the phrase we'll give you enough rope to hang yourself okay <laughs> All right. I think every parent does that because that's part of parenting, and you'll find that out when you have a family, is I'm going to give my kid, you know, he thinks he knows everything. She thinks she knows everything. Boys are worse, let me tell you, okay? We all think we know everything. But, um, you know, they're going to give you a little bit. They're going to give you enough freedom to, to either make the right decision or to make a fool of yourself. And by making a fool of yourself, obviously, they're hoping you learn a lesson and you don't repeat that. So, so there's, a, there's a method to madness to parenting. But I get where you're coming from because I mean, I thought my parents didn't know anything until I was about 19 or 20. I'm like, wow, you guys know everything, you know. So <laughs> that light bulb goes on. All right. So, would you rather be a dragon, own a dragon, or slay a dragon? And anybody can start. Slay one. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> um. He's cool. <laughs> sure. And he, you can talk smack. Hey, yeah, slay the dragon. Power. What the heck? <laughs> you could brag about it. Sure, sure. Good, good answer. <laughs> like if you're at, to slay a dragon, like you'd be able to be like, well, now you can't defeat me at all. So. <laughs> okay, so that air of invincibility. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, I would like to own a dragon. There you go. <laughs> um, I would use that as my transportation to get everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Now, now, where are you going to go to school? I know I don't like driving, so... Well, where are you going to go to school? Oh, I want to go to New York University. Okay, so everybody in New York takes cabs. Very few people have cars. Because, I fly right over there. Because, you know, there's like 15 million people in the city. Yeah. You're flying your dragon. You're going to the student park. He was like, yeah, you want to move right now? Because I got my dragon there. They don't want to move. What happens? Their car is toast. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, they got the fire. You know, they got the, oh, yeah. Their car is toast. <laughs> Honestly, I would own a dragon just because, like, how cool it would be. Like, oh, come sure. meet my pet. And, you like, they turn around as a dragon. And then, like, transportation and no one would bully yeah. you because you have a, a dragon. 
dragon. Like, yeah, exactly. It's all you want to see my new cat. You want to see my dragon? Yeah, yeah right. Like you always win everything. Um, I probably own one because I feel like they'd be like a good friend. I guess I don't know. Sure. Dragons are friendly. <laughs> Um, I would own one just because like it's cool. You're just like, oh, I have a dragon. Sure, it's like a status symbol, yeah. you know. I got a dragon. What do you got? You got a fish. You know? <laughs> Nobody wanted to be a dragon. Bad breath, you know. You know, worry yeah. about, you know. They probably smell a little bit. Unless, of course, you guys are all owning one. We would bathe them and probably put a little perfume on and a little foo foo stuff. You know, I can understand that. All right, so I think we're having a pretty good time. I'm gonna ask one more because I like this group. They're 18. <laughs> They're ready to go set the world on fire. All right. You got any suggestions? What? Good question. So I pay him the big money. If you could go to the future or past, past or present, past or future, where would you go and what would you do? A lot of people like to go back in time. Some people want to go forward in time. I think I would go to the past. Okay. Um, and I would probably go to like when I first started playing 18U. Okay. <laughs> Cause um, I think I didn't really take it as seriously. Like, I mean, I was there, but I didn't really think anything of myself. Or, so you want to kind of right the wrongs that you did yeah. coming up? Okay, that's a good answer. Anybody? You don't have to go in order. Um. I'm gonna sound like a kind of like a nerd right now, but I would go back into like history to like when America was like first like being started and go like to like in the 1700s. Yeah, like okay. I'm a nerd. Are we so talking like, pilgrims? Or are we talking <laughs> no, Revolutionary like, War? Like founding fathers, like George Washington and all okay, those. Okay, so we're talking <laughs> Revolutionary <laughs> oh, War. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, not the pilgrims. Okay. Okay, I would probably go in the future, okay. just because like the past is the past so you're like you've seen the mistakes you can learn from them sure but hopefully then it, but then it would also be cool to see what's gonna happen like even if like because we're all gonna die one day so you're gonna see like what's gonna happen after I think the future would be kind of scary though yeah. you know what happened in the past you can right the wrong like you said the future it's anybody's guess right okay um, I would go back to the past just because there's a lot of things I would want to relive such as um, well, I didn't, there's a lot of people that are not, not here today, so okay. I would obviously, yeah, like, I would want to spend more time with them. Good answer. Especially, like, the time I did spend with them, I kind of took for granted. No, so I, that's, I, I can totally appreciate that. Them. I would love to be able yeah. to go back and see my father again, who's not here anymore, so that's a good answer. Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so you're a center fine, fielder. Fine you're going to throw the cutoff person, or are you just going to like gun it home and just nail them at the plate? Nail them at the plate. I love this girl. <laughs> faster, faster future. Um, maybe the past. Okay. So I could just like do the fun things I already did because I know they're fun already. Or you could fix all the fashion faux pas. You're like, man, your hair was like out of... <laughs> especially if you went to the 80s, you know. You probably see your parents' pictures with the big hair oh and the glamour shots. And I'm like, what were you thinking? <laughs> you, know? you know, we didn't have internet back then. We didn't have Facebook. We didn't have Snapchat or Instagram. We couldn't put bunny ears on ourselves. So you did the glamour photos, and you went through a can and a half of Aquanet on your hair. And it was like it was big and stuff. So Times change, but... We all had fun. I was an 80s kid, so, you know, we all had fun in our own in our own generation. Okay. So, uh, before we wrap it up, I didn't get a chance to go down and give you guys pre-show instructions because we were just really, really busy, and you guys brought the whole south side of Tucson with you today. Mm -hmm. so we really, yeah, we really, we, we really, we really appreciate it. We were going to tell all the burglars out there, you probably have, you know, <laughs> nobody's home. So, um, this is a nationwide broadcast, and the reason we do it, on Facebook, I know it's for old people, but the reason we do it on Facebook is because um, a lot of people in Tucson and Southern Arizona are not originally from here, or their family's not originally from here, whether it's somewhere in the United States, or in Mexico, or another country, or something like that. Personally, I'm from San Diego, so, you know, every time I get a chance to shout out, I'm like, right on, let's do it, you know, let's go to the beach. So, anybody you want to shout out to, pets are included, one of the Mesa girls last night, Shout it out to her fish, Gary. <laughs> so uh, anybody you want to shout out to, um, let me give you a little. T let me give you the Hispanic kids a little tip here. 
None of the other ones included Nana. You don't include Nana. You get that chonkla right by your head going down the hall, and Nana's got a better arm than that center fielder. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead. I would just like to shout out the whole Scrambler fam that is here. Okay. Thank you for yes, your support. Yes, they are. They were. <laughs> and my family and all my friends that are here today. No, oh, I'm really, really impressed with this organization, and it's been a three-year wait to get you guys on, and now I know why. You're in high demand. <laughs> um, I'd like to shout out the team who's become my family, and my my Tata Louie, <laughs> and my Nana Veronica for starting this whole organization, and my Theo Bruno for always pushing me to do oh, my Lou hardest. Gonzalez, huh? Lou yeah. was my boss <laughs> yeah. back in the day. And I'd like to give a special shout-out to my mom. She's the strongest woman I know, and I wouldn't be where I am today without her always believing in me. I love your Nana Veronica. She's such a good lady. Um, I want to shout-out my parents for all the support that they've given me, like everything they've done for me. Um, the Scrambler family, they've been my family since I started playing softball. Um, Bruno has also been a big part of it, and Louis especially. He's actually the one I started with, so just everybody in general, Scramblers. That's great. Uh, I want to shout out my uh, mom and dad who are currently watching me intently. Hi, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just for like always showing me to be positive in every situation. Uh, my nana and papa, um, my best friend Trey, and also just the scram Scrambler family for accepting me because I used to be this shy little kid who didn't think... Nice, like nice. Me, so it's like for them. Cool, cool. We have one more person because I know my sister's watching. So my sister and my godson too. I love uh, you guys. And uh, sister, thanks for watching. Uh, <laughs> everybody, actually, thanks for watching. I know we've got. Uh, I was told by one of the parents that we've got people on the islands in Hawaii watching tonight. So uh, my pro my producer just got back from Hawaii a couple days ago. Yesterday. Um. I want to thank my mom, my dad, my brother, and my dog Peaches. Your dog Peaches, okay. Good deal. <laughs> that, that rivals Carrie the fish. <laughs> um, I want to thank my parents, um, and I know my grandpa's watching, and so is my stepdad. Um, Good deal, thank you. My the scramblers, especially the coaches, because they pushed me to do my best and to always encourage me and always be there for me, especially Mikey. So. No. One more. Oh, that's right. I forgot um, you. I'm I'd sorry. I say the best for last. My dad. Yes, we did. Yes. the My dad, even though he can be the biggest, a lot of words, but um, he's always pushed me to be my best, and he's one of the best coaches out there, and I love him very much. All right. Terrific. You guys have made a lasting impression on me. We've had the Roadrunners on, and, and I love Bob Hamaker and the Roadrunners. You guys and, and their team and your team are like the they're like the Pilgrims. They're like the founding fathers of of club softball in Tucson. Um, you know, and Bob does a great job with the with the Roadrunners. We really really enjoyed having them on our show. So um, be proud you're a scrambler. You guys are you know you guys are one of the best in, in Southern Arizona. You and the Roadrunners lead the pack. As far as uh, longevity, and uh, you know, you guys are putting people in college. You're taking, you know, the roadrunner or the roaders and the scramblers are taking the financial burden off the parents, getting the scholarships. Good luck in school. Good luck in athletics. And if you just and you, if you've chosen not to continue your athletic career, you have a lot of great memories, not only in high school ball but also in scrambler ball. So uh, kudos to that. Believe me, when you get as old as I do. The legends get real big. Uh, that that one home run you had in the game come, becomes like five. I had five home runs in a game. Honest, you know. It just the legends grow as time goes by. So, I want to thank you guys very, very much. Uh, just a quick uh, program note: tomorrow's show uh, with the 04 Royals and Ray Camacho, who is the assistant coach at the University of Arizona. Uh, we're going to reschedule that uh, to a more convenient time. It'll right be right here at Frog and Firkin. Uh, I want to thank uh, Pearson, my producer. Uh, I was a little, little stressful without him. He was, at, you know, on a family vacation in Hawaii, but uh, we managed uh, once again last night. I want to thank uh, the people up in Chandler on the 602 Sports Talk Show and the East Mesa Bandits, uh, Coach Gaines. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Copper Hill Moonshine Grill, 
We're going to be back up in a week or so to have another great 602 Sports Talk show there. So, once again, thank you guys for watching. If you have not liked the page or followed the page, 520 Sports Talk or 602 Sports Talk, please do. It helps me when I go get advertisers saying, I have 63, over 6,300 followers on 520. Uh, Phoenix is a brand new. We have almost 400 followers. Let's keep that going. And uh, we love everybody that uh, loves to loves to watch and support our shows. So remember, 520 Sports Talk, Southern Arizona Sports with a twist to wrap.